In this video, we're going to take the time to start off installing the Java SE SDK so that we'll have a base to build on for the rest of the course. To get here, we need to go to oracle.com slash technetwork slash java slash java se slash downloads slash index.html. Now you could also go to Google and type in java se downloads and it should bring you to this page fairly easily. These videos are going to be done for a Windows machine and I will be using the 32-bit version of the Java SDK for my install. What we're going to do is look at the platform JDK. Currently it's 7 update 45 at the time of this video. Your version might be a little newer than this and that is okay. Just get whatever the most recent version is. Go ahead and select download. And when you get to the download page, you'll need to say accept the license agreement and then find the correct distribution for your machine. Now ours is the Windows x86 that I'm using in this demonstration course, but you may be using Linux or Solaris or Mac and you would want to get the correct distribution. If you're on a Linux machine, I would recommend first checking to see if it isn't already installed. It may very well be. As well as if you're on like Ubuntu, you might look up the specific sudo command to get the SDK installed if it's not, rather than coming to this page. So what I'm doing is downloading the JDK right now for this Windows machine. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video while this download completes. So if you're watching this along with me, go ahead and pause your video and then come back when your download completes as well. All right, our download is completed. So we're going to go ahead and select this and we'll bring it up and double click and do the installation. So as we're installing this, we'll see that it will install both the Java SE development kit and eventually we'll run into an installation request for the JRE. So we're gonna go ahead and install both of them and just make sure that all of these are selected and they are by default and that you're installing to something sensible like x86 program files, Java, JDK 1.7.0 underscore 45 is my version number. Whatever your version number is there would make the most sense. So if it's 51 at the time of your installation, go ahead and leave that. So again, I'm gonna pause the video while this installation completes. Just remember that there is going to be a prompt and go ahead and select that you do want to install the JRE when you hit that point. All right, our installation has completed, so we'll go ahead and close that and we can actually delete our installation file. We don't need that anymore. And then let's go ahead and go to our computer and we'll look first for the installation, which on our computer here is program files x86 and it should be a Java folder. Verify that we do have both of our folders as expected with our current version number there. And then inside the bin folder, we'll just verify we have Java and java.exe. And so if you don't have your extensions showing on a Windows machine, you may need to turn those on. It'll be very important in just a moment as well. We just want to verify those are there. And we'll grab this path by selecting it and then either right-clicking and selecting copy, or you can just hit Control-C and that would copy it as well. Now we're going to need that because we're going to set up an environment variable. To do that, we're going to right-click on our computer and select properties. And if you don't have the computer showing on your desktop, you could find it in the start menu and select properties and that brings up this page and we need the advanced system settings the environment variables and then down here we're going to find a path and we're going to edit it at the very end of the path we don't want to change anything that's already there these are very important pieces of information for programs to run so at the very end of our path we just want to add a semicolon and then control v to paste in the path to our bin now we're doing this so that we can directly access those programs through our command line so hello world.java is a very simple hello world file, which simply is a Java file. We're just gonna open it with notepad here real quick. It has hello world, string args, and a public void main. And we're basically gonna print out hello Java world so we can see that. Now we're only doing this just so that we can quickly see that our Java installation is working. So we're gonna go ahead and open our computer here and we'll create a folder called Java Projects right on our hard drive. Now you can put this on any drive you want. If you want to keep it on a thumb drive or in a different location, go ahead and do that. Just put it somewhere that you can easily remember where your Java projects are stored. And then we need a folder for Hello World, and then we'll put our file in there. You should be able to get the Hello World from the resources for the course. And you'll note that it is .java and not .java.txt. So that's why it was very important to make sure that we have our files allowing the extensions to be seen. Once we have that, we can go ahead and bring up a command line browser and we can switch to that directory where our projects are stored. And then we'll switch to the hello world folder and we'll just list the directory, make sure that our program is there, it is. And we'll just say javic.exe, hello world.java. 
and that will compile the program, creating our class file. And we'll say Java Hello World. Our Java installation is working, and we are very easily allowed to program in Java on our machine. And you can see the class file was created as we compiled it here 